Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about connected and disconnected graphs. So a connected graph is one in which we can move from any vertex on the graph to any other vertex on the graph without going off the graph. So for example, here we have a connected graph. We can move from vertex A to any vertex we want. So we can move directly from A to E. We can move to get to D, we could go through E and over to D. To get to B, we could continue on this way. If we wanted to go to C, we could go from E to D to C. If you can get from any one vertex, vertex on the graph to the others, that means that they will all work. So this graph is connected. This graph in yellow is an example of a graph that's disconnected. It's not connected because there's no way to get from vertex A, for example, over to vertex B without going off the graph. There are no edges connecting A to any of the vertices B, D, or C. Now, the connected pieces of a graph are called the components of the graph. For example, this disconnected graph in yellow has two components, the component containing A and E and the component containing B, C, and D. Now any connected graph only has one component. Now you'll be asked questions like this one. Determine whether the graph is connected or disconnected. Then determine how many components it has. Whenever you're asked to determine if a graph is connected or disconnected, you want to think, is there a way to get from one of the vertices to all of the rest? You only have to check that it works for one vertex. Now with a small graph, you might think, well, it looks pretty clearly connected, but it can get confusing sometimes. So it's good to have a nice set procedure that you can do. So what you can do is jot down the names of all of the vertices and just go through and check them off. Start with one starting vertex and see if you can get to each of the others. From vertex A, for example, I know I can get to B, so we're good there. From A, I can get to C, so we're good there. From A, I can get to D, so we're good there. And from A, I can get to E. Now, it doesn't have to be just in one edge. So I can go from A to D and then to E. I can still get to E without going off the graph. Since there's a walk from A to each other vertex, this graph is in fact connected. And anytime you have a connected graph, the number of components is exactly one. All right, let's look at another graph. Determine whether this graph is connected or disconnected. Now this one's a little bit more tricky. Let me show you what happens when we perform our test that we were just doing where we pick a vertex and we see if we can get to each other vertex. So my vertices are A, B, C, D, E, and F. Let's say I'm starting with A again. It doesn't matter which one, but you know, might as well start at the beginning of the alphabet. And let's see, just right off the bat, trying to get to B is gonna be a problem. B is over here. And there's no way to get off of this triangle. Remember, just because two edges of a graph cross does not mean that you can turn there. There's no vertex that's connecting edge AD to edge BF. This means that there's no walk that I can take staying on the graph to get from A to B. Since there's no walk from A to B, this is a disconnected graph. It's just that the way that it's drawn, it kind of looks like it's connected, but in fact, you could draw it uh, spread out and it would be more clear that in fact, we have two completely separate triangles. So the number of components in this graph is actually two. Now let's look at a similar graph. It appears similar. It looks like two triangles, one on top of the other. But notice that there's a big difference because of vertex D here. Vertex D is connecting the triangle ACG to the triangle EFB. So for example, if I wanna to get to vertex B from A, I can do that, I just have to pass through D to get there. Starting at A, I can go to G and then to D and then get to B. And so let's make our list A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and just confirm that we can get from A to every other vertex. So we said we can get to B. Let's go from A to C, no problem. 
A to D, well, I can just go this direction to get to D. A to E, well, I can continue through D over to B and up to E, for example, so that works. If I want to get to F, I just go one edge further, and then I've already gone to G. I already see there's one edge between A and G. So I can get from A to, to any vertex, which means there's a path between any two pairs of vertices. This means that we have a connected graph, and of course, every connected graph has exactly one component. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. The next video is going to be about bridges and local bridges. If you'd like to watch more graph theory videos and other math videos, please subscribe to my channel, Miss Hearn Mathematics.